warning for attempted assault. The story happened about two years ago in December. My friends and I took a trip down to the county. I live in the UK, and for privacy reasons, I won't disclose the name of the town. I'm not trying to get anything off this. I just wanted to share my story. My friends and I arrived at the place we were staying at. It was a busy place, and we were here for the nightlife. I'll cut through the boring stuff. The first night, I didn't go out drinking with my friends that night. I actually stayed in the hotel bar and watched the football. But on the second night, I went out with a few friends to the club, and we ended up club hopping. My memory is a little foggy, but it was the third club, I believe, and it was busy, of course. Trust me, describing how busy the club is is very important. My friends and I had a few drinks, but then we agreed to all get shots, one friend per round. When it was my time, I got up to the bar and ordered a few random shot drinks that they had on the menu, and then this guy came over to me. I'm not a cute person at all, but I was too overly dressed for the party, and he was complimenting me. I'm pansexual, so I was really flattered with his comments, but I'm not really the meet and go home for the night with a person type of guy. He had a drink, and it was vodka and coke, and he appeared to be on his own. He kept on asking me to have it, and I was rightfully a little suspicious, since spiking is a very big risk these days. I rejected his drink and lied, saying that I wasn't drinking, hoping he'd leave. When he saw my shots arrive, he looked annoyed, and he called me out on it. I lied, saying it was my friend's shots, which is half true since I was only having one shot, but he looked annoyed. He tried to ask me if I could join him at my friend's group, and at this point I didn't want to say no as I'm not really the confrontational type. I said that I'd go and ask them, and then I quickly left, then mentioning what happened. I lost the guy in the crowd. I couldn't see where he was, so I quickly forgot about him as the shots then took over. I'm not sure when, but I had to use the bathroom. And me being stupid, I should have asked a friend to go with me. In order to get to the bathroom, you had to walk upstairs and go down an alley, and the bathrooms were on the side. Why they didn't have bathrooms below, I don't know. I walked into the bathroom, which was empty, and it had a few stalls and the usual. As I was doing my business, what do you know, the same guy walked in. I thought that he just needed to use the bathroom too, but he didn't even say anything. He walked over, grabbed me by my area, and tried kissing me. He seemed very drunk, but it didn't excuse him trying to get with me like that. I pushed him off and he was now laughing in a drunk state. He then tried grabbing me again, but screaming for help wouldn't have done anything as you could barely even hear the music due to how far the bathroom was, so no one was coming. Thankfully though, the guy was shorter than me. I'm only about 5'11", and I'm not that strong, but I was able to push him off and get out of the bathroom. I told my friends about what happened, but they were too drunk to do much, but one of them was really harsh when he was annoyed while drunk. He followed me back to the bathroom, but the guy was gone. We went over the security, and I did my best to describe the guy, and they said they saw someone leave the club, but they didn't have CCTV for some reason. I asked if they could get word out to the other clubs or something, but the bouncer said he would see what he could do, but I never heard anything. Nothing on social media, no updates, nothing. I went back to my room, this time my group with me, and they went back out for the night while I stayed in the room. Male assault is a real thing, and guys need to be careful too. I'm just glad that guy was shorter than me and I could actually push him off so easily. But if he was a stronger guy, God only knows what would have happened. Maybe nothing much since it was a public bathroom, and it's pretty stupid to attempt something like that when anyone could walk in. But alcohol, man. Some people can hold it, and some people just can't. This event doesn't scar me and I won't say that it permanently affected me. It just gave me a lesson to be smarter when in clubs. I should have brought a friend with me to the bathroom after telling them about the creepy guy. So yeah, that's my story. Stay safe in clubs, everyone. 
and make sure you keep a group with you at all times. There really are some weirdos out there. I'm from Seattle, Washington. This story is meant to raise awareness for going out on weekends, especially in college. My friends and I usually go to a particular bar at our university, and it's usually crowded on Friday nights. When my friends and I were enjoying our time catching up and getting drinks, people began to notice a suspicious looking man walking around the bar. He had a backpack on, and that was really unusual for that kind of setting because why would you need that to hang out at a bar? My friends and I thought nothing of it at first, but a lot of people were beginning to notice him along with the bouncers of the bar. I found it strange that the man had entered because every man is pounded down every time we enter due to increased homelessness, etc. One of the things I noticed specifically was him trying to enter the kitchen area in the bar, which alerted a lot of individuals because it is clear that no one's allowed to enter that part of the bar. The guy was confusing, and it was scarier because he didn't even seem to be on drugs or anything. He began sitting down and minding his business, but the bouncers began to become even more suspicious of the increased reports of the man in the bar. It's hard to judge someone's character automatically, but my intuition was telling me that something was not right with this man. The bar is majority college students, and it's already weird enough when you see an old man staring at the women, but this guy seemed off. We noticed the bouncers talking to him with serious looks. The guy at first was normal, but he got more irritated as the conversation went on. I knew something didn't make sense because they're bouncers. At one point, it seemed the man had agreed to leave the bar. No one thought anything of it because no one knows those full-on conversations. But 15 minutes later, every hair on my body rose. A friend that I saw at the bar earlier had texted me if I was okay. I was confused because I was doing great. But unfortunately, she told me that there was a university alert of an armed man that the police found when questioning him about a suspicious activity near the bar. This was very unsettling to me because of the amount of what-if situations that went through my head. What if he was on drugs and started shooting people at the bar? It's a really scary feeling knowing how strange people can be. I pretty much wrote this story to you all for the sake of awareness. If you ever have a gut instinct telling you that something's not right, please do not ignore it. I'm very thankful of how many people spoke up along with the bouncer's way of handling the situation. Please be careful everyone, and don't be afraid to speak out about these kinds of matters in bars or clubs. Seriously. This happened in 2016. I know, a while ago but I'm going to give some backstory. From 2009 to 2016, I was really addicted to drugs. I did whatever to feed my addiction. Please don't judge. I came from a Christian family who didn't approve of my life. Now to the story. I danced at a club and met many different Johns, but this one in particular took a very interesting interest in me. I sat with him a few times at the club, but nothing serious. Well, all of a sudden, he had started acting like we were dating. I got off work at 10, and he'd always be there at 9.30. I soon realized that he was really enthralled in me. Now, if you guys remember, I was badly addicted to drugs, so really nothing scared me. The next day, I had a date, and everything was going fine, until I looked out my window. There was Mike. Yes, Mike. Not even trying to hide his whereabouts. After my date was over, he actually had the nerve to walk in and then say, You better be glad that was quick. If not, I had another idea in mind. I knew that I should have kicked him out right then. And after everything looking back, I now know that his intentions were bad. So here comes the catalyst that changed my life. On a Saturday night in August, I was working, and I had no idea that that'd be my last night dancing. I went home around 10 and fell asleep. I woke up and I realized that I had left the TV on. Well, after realizing that, I look up and I see flames everywhere in my apartment. 
all over my hallway and my curtains. It felt like I was in a nightmare. I've had many people I know who've talked to Mike and he's actually confessed to doing it, but I can't prove it. I hope Mike stays away from not only me, but other women as well. He's just way too dangerous as a person, and I really hope that he gets the help he needs. The events happened 13 years ago, and it still messes with me to this day even though I'm not in any sort of danger. When I was in college, I got super depressed and stressed out near my junior year. I was always super into school and just started slipping near the end of my college terms, so it threw me off bad. I never experienced failing at subjects before, and it threw me into ridiculous stress. I graduated and I figured everything would go away with that, but I found myself still feeling mentally foggy. My sister knew how bad off I was from the last years of school, so she had hatched a plan to surprise me. I always wanted to go to Miami growing up. I know how lame that sounds, but being a girl who grew up in the Midwest and even went to college there, it was always super exciting looking to me. Up to this point, I had traveled, but I never went anywhere as lively or as big as Miami always seemed. My sister had planned a five-night vacation with me as a way to get me out of this mental fog and to also celebrate in our own way of me graduating college. I was super excited. The few months passed and it was time for the trip. We got there and the first few nights were incredible. We hit up the restaurants that I had on my list of places to try and spent many hours by the ocean. I was never really a big party girl. Up to this point in my life, I was drunk maybe twice. My sister was the opposite, who was at every party that happened in our hometown. She got bored of going back to the room so early every night and convinced me to go to a nightclub with her for the first time. I fought it for a bit, but I let my guard down because I was feeling great for the first time in a really long time and I was ready to try new things. It was a Saturday night downtown in the middle of summer. We get to this nightclub and the line is legit wrapped around the building. It was massive. We waited in line for what felt like forever and we were let in finally. I walked in the door and I felt like I got shot because of the loudness. My sister then dragged me to the bar and ordered some shots of some drink with a funny name. Once again, I decided to just let my guard down and try new things. As more shots went down, I decided that that would be the theme of the night, trying new stuff out. I was aware how boring I was, and I was in the most exciting place in the world. Around 45 minutes into dancing and drinking, I became very drunk, borderline blackout. I was very sloppy drunk and was aware of it. I found myself laying on a couch thing in the upstairs area overlooking the dance floor as my sister was dancing with some guys. As I lay there trying to consciously sober myself up, I realized how badly that I had to pee. So I brought myself up to a sitting position on the couch to stand up and then walk to the nearby bathroom. As I sat up, a massive man quickly sat so close to me I could feel his leather pants pressed on my leg. He was huge, absolutely over six feet tall, and he looked like some sort of bodybuilder. Admittedly, he was also very good looking. But I was so drunk that I wasn't even trying to flirt, and I just needed to get up to find the bathroom. He smiled at me and then yelled over the music something like, Leaving so soon? I remember nervously laughing and attempting to get up, but he grabbed onto my dress and then pulled me back down to a sitting position right next to him. His smile went away, and he then said in a very deep tone, I don't remember telling you that you were allowed to leave, bitch! Even though I was very drunk leading up to this, I felt like I sobered up within seconds. I had never had anything like this happen before, but I wasn't just going to allow this guy, no matter how much bigger than me he is, to do that to me. I attempted to stand up again, and he did the exact same thing, but much more aggressive this time. I thought it was insanely rude, but I wasn't afraid because of how many people were around me. He tapped my heels with his big yellow leather boots and then said to me, I couldn't help but notice how much I want to fuck your feet. 
My fight or flight kicked in right then. I slapped him in the face and then stood up to walk away. I was very uncomfortable, but I still wasn't afraid just because of the amount of people that were around me. As I was walking away, I had heard him laughing and then he yelled to me. I'm really trying to decide if I want to keep your feet after I cut up the rest of your sexy little body into pieces. I can still hear that in my mind play out clear as day. I walked away very quickly as I attempted to search for my sister on the dance floor from above. I couldn't find her. So I decided to take out my phone to text her just to see if I had missed a call from her. I was out of eye shot from this dude and cut away to the bathroom so I could call her back. It was still pretty loud in there, but it wasn't loud enough where she couldn't hear me on the phone. I went into a stall and called her back. As I was in the stall, I had heard the bathroom door open and then someone went into the one directly next to me. I was waiting for her to pick up when I looked down underneath the stall and saw the same guy's very distinct yellow leather boots. He was standing there. I felt like I was about to die. I know that he knew I was in there. I held my breath and hung up the phone, just staring at his shoes, not moving a single bit from when he shut the door. I heard the main bathroom door open again, and I immediately ran out of the stall, out the door, and then straight to outside the club without slowing down even once. I was terrified. Just so happens my sister was so close to where I came out trying to call me to ask if I was ready to leave. I told her we needed to get back as soon as possible. We got back to the room safely, and I then told her everything that happened. She suggested calling the police, but I was just so ready to drop it. We changed our flight, and the next night flew back home. I searched for a few years pretty actively online for a rest in the area to see if he would ever come up. He never did. After a few years, I moved on mentally, and I got over it for the most part but it's hands down the scariest moment in my life. I don't know who this guy was and if he was just saying those things to scare me or if he was serious, but whatever the case, I definitely never want to see his face again. Hey everyone, that's about it for today's stories. If you have your own story that you would like to send, you can send it in at southerncannibal.com or you can email it at southerncannibalstories at gmail.com. I look forward to telling your story. Have a good night or good day, everyone. And remember, to always, stay.